What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Sidewalk Weekly. I'm John. I'm Lauren. You guys probably know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Gianni. And for this series, we're going to talk about the hypest news of the week and make sure to stay till the end because we're going to talk about the hit of the week, the miss of the week, and what we're all looking forward to in EDM. So last week, we covered the church's marshmallow debate. We got to bring it back this week because there's been some new news about it. So Justin Bieber, believe it or not, actually posted on his Instagram. He said, legendary equation, Michael Jackson plus Tupac equals Chris Brown. <laughs> and then he also goes on to say like how we're gonna realize when Chris Brown's gone that we have a legend right in front of us. Well, if you look at, Jai Wolf tweeted out about, you know, him talking about how, you know, Marshmallow should have said something in that really tense situation. Now, to be honest, it's kind of true. You know, Marshmallow has this really big power. He's still been silent, right? He's yeah. still been silent. Yeah, yeah. Dang. And, and I mean, like, with that much big power and publicity, you would have thought, like, you know, maybe he could have said something to ease the situation just a little bit. But no, we still haven't gotten any response from that. He won't say something now because he already knew that he was going to work with these artists probably months ago. Yeah. But I think the craziest part is Church is getting death threats. Wow. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, they're probably, they're from Chris Brown's fans. So that just shows Chris Brown's community is people who want to attack. Yeah, yeah, basically. That's a reflection. No, you're right. Yeah. That's Big true. Breaks. All right, guys. So for the first segment, we're going to be talking about Holy Ship. Now, they just announced that for the next year, they will not be using a ship, that the party's actually going to be on land. Basically in the same boat as you, <laughs> because, you know, sadly, I've never gone on a cruise ship before. or I've Dude, been... I've never been on a cruise. Yeah, yeah. I know. You know, it's so, it's so sad to see what's happening, but we have the Space Yacht. They're doing their own thing now. With, um... Is Space Yacht doing a cruise? They are. Yeah, they're, do they're actually having the, the party on, on a boat now, on a yacht. That is so. sick. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. This partnership is with Carnival. So Carnival is like a huge cruising company. I've been on so many cruises and I think it was a good call eight years ago when they started doing this because a lot of the people who go on cruises are like 60 upwards. I'm usually the youngest person on a cruise. So this would attract their next target market. They need to bring in the new batch of people. So I think it was a good call early on and probably something within those eight years. Probably difficult to have something like this at sea because you have to think about all the regulations. I know some people yeah. might be even like smuggling stuff. You see on Reddit, like some DJs are like bringing drugs on board and stuff. I mean, it yeah. must be so difficult to like regulate. Like... I just liked how the artists were just chilling it though. Yeah. Like it's so cool. Just like a big party as opposed to like when you're at a festival, they're so far away. I, I like that aspect of it though. It's yeah. more personal. Next topic is about Diplo playing at Stagecoach, a country music festival. Dang, that's pretty crazy. There's a lot, there's a lot I have to say about this. So first of all, if you guys don't know, he had a lot of special performances. He brought out Cam, Sam Hunt, which is a country artist, and he brought out Lil Nas and Billy Ray, which yeah. is, that's pretty big. That's I mean, that's the number one song right now. It brings me back to 2013 when I was watching the Ultra live stream and Avicii was playing. And then all of a sudden, you know, the stage goes dark and then he brings out Owl Black to perform Wake oh, Me Up. Sick, yeah. And it shocked the whole entire music um, industry because it was like, oh my God, like Avicii's going on to this whole new thing. You know, I was even shocked as well. And at the time, I wasn't sure if I really liked it, but you know, Wake Me Up is one of the biggest songs in electronic music, I feel. And it's just, it, it was a movement for yeah. sure. So, so what I liked about that performance is that he brought out just a whole band. Yeah, definitely. Like, Red drummers, guitarists, but I feel like for Diplo, he pretty much, I mean, he is a DJ, mm. but for a lot of country music, the, it's the live performances. Like, sure, they brought out those people, but it would have been so cool if he had drummers or a guitarist right. to just have the whole performance. I'm just really curious, like, where does he go from here? Yeah. So he's playing EDC in about two weeks. Last year's EDC set, he's like throwing like quicks, unreleased bangers to open up with. Mm. What, what's this year gonna be? <laughs> you know, he had that Old Town Road remix that he just released. I'm not a fan of it. I hope he doesn't play it. I don't want to hear that. He just released a house EP, Nitty Gritty. What's it gonna be like in the future? Yeah. Is he gonna stick with his country or like every different festival is gonna be a different Diplo that we get to see? And it's a good call. I mean, a lot of, I was on the country red and a lot of people didn't even know who Diplo is. Yeah, no, and it definitely got a good segue there. to EDM. I mean, right. how many other EDM artists could play, play stagecoach? 
Well, Probably done really. And also, yeah. Diplo played a ton of electronic music, yeah. like a lot of and electronic music. And hip hop, it was done really well. Like the right. only set at Stagecoach yeah. that had any music that wasn't country. And I heard that more and more people in country want to have like dance floor country. Yeah. Um, so that's how EDM comes in because even like Tequila, which is one of the biggest songs in country yeah. music, mm. they had like five um, EDM remixes to it. Audion had a sick song oh, with yeah. Lady Antebellum, mm. and I I can see that more and more artists are starting to collaborate with people outside of their genre and I, I think it's only going to bring like more new and unique music. The other part, the interesting part though, is a lot of country people saying that Diplo's in it for a cash grab. And yeah. he's a culture vulture. I mean, Does fair enough. Does that make look bad? I mean, no. no. <laughs> That's just Diplo who he is. Yeah. Yeah. Before Diplo played EDC, he was like, oh, you guys are going to play at a Disney Wonderland and like, then the next year he's playing yeah. and now he's playing yeah. again two years in a row. It's just like, he just, he's doing whatever he can. Okay, so the last topic we're going to be talking about is about Ajuna Beats um, doing collaboration partnership with Twitch and allowing Ajuna Beats music to be allowed on Twitch in the background. For and, live streamers, For live yeah. streamers, and I feel like that's a really good partnership idea because, you know, it's going to expose a lot of Twitch streamers and Ajuna Beats artists in, in their music. Merging gamers with music is just, that's a big thing right now. Right. There's a lot of companies like Monster Cat that are pushing like big artists out there on their gaming platform. I notice a lot of people are starting to get into Twitch streams like producers. Mm -hmm. They're just using it as a way to show their production and show their work and also like gain a like personal connection with them. You know, there's guys like Virtual Riot who have been doing it for a very long time. Panda Eyes is someone that I came to love just because I watched a bunch of his streams. I know you're just watching them produce, but just hearing their little commentary or like people in the comments writing stuff, it kind of builds that connection to the artist. Someone like Cray, who was a gamer on there, actually got her whole following just from like a funny inside joke that happened on Twitch. And it's so crazy that Twitch has the power to bring like a whole community of people together for an artist. Right. I mean, even Ninja did his, I guess, compilation on yeah. Twitch and he got big from Twitch. And yeah, yeah, it exactly. was with Astral Works, which is the record label that Alice in Wonderland is signed to. And a lot of artists okay. were on that compilation. But I think what Twitch could do is so they're partnering with these big companies like Anjuna, but I think it would be cool to see Anjuna, these artists actually live stream on Twitch. Cause there's yeah. so few platforms, like a lot of artists feel like even going on YouTube is a hurdle because they have to find a videographer, they have to shoot it really well, but we really want artists to showcase their personality. So I feel like if Twitch worked directly with these artists or gave them like monetary incentives to live stream onto Twitch, or with um, big labels, Ausla, they have a partnership with Ausla, and then yeah, they have right. like the Ausla right. artists under to live stream, that would make people- um, That'd be sick. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. I went to, Deadmau5 had this gaming convention with Twitch Prime, so that was really cool to get into that space, but it seems to be just a few artists that are really into that live streaming. Remember that, um, 24 hour live stream that Jack you did back then. Oh, yeah, that, that was, was the sick. longest but that day. Got pulled I know, it was it was so much fun though. I remember yeah. tuning in for that. It was just so exciting. But um, also with the Dead Mouse, like um they canceled his account, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well actually I think they suspended him at first for using bad language yeah. or so something like I think he said something homophobic to one of the community members and they banned him and then Dead Mouse was like, nah, you guys are gonna ban me, like I'm quitting and then like just yeah, I guess the, like the opposite of live streaming is that when artists really get to be their personalities, it's like you're still censoring it. Right. That's yeah. true. Right. Yeah, that's, that's very true. true. So now we're going to talk about our hits of the week. So my hit for this week, I don't know if you guys know about a little festival called Ubi Doobie, Ubi Dubby, something like that in my hometown <laughs> Dallas. But anyways, so What's or Not played a set there. And in the middle of his set, he hit his head on a low hanging LED wall. And like, he's like, gets up to the DJ booth can't figure out like what songs to play like it's just going blank and just yeah. ended up playing the full set with a concussion and then got treated wow. after and was fine he's fine now but he finished an entire set with a concussion and what's or not is already one of my favorite producers and i just i think that's so cool that he was just like you know i gotta give my fans some type of set you know like all these people came out so i was he's, just yeah he's really such a trooper because i think 
his last tour or something, he broke his leg and he tore it off for like Yeah, that's yeah. right. I forgot yeah. about that too. That. He got, he got I think it was leg because he was way. in crutches. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was on stage. Like, yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> He's just a no beast. He, he can do anything. Yeah. yeah. That's what crazy. a guy. So my hit of the week is Steve Aoki. So there's this app called New App that it actually features a lot of leading fitness instructors. Kind of like a Nike training app. Yeah, thing. exactly like that. Just like showing all the like fitness moves or something that you follow mm -hmm. along at home. Actually with him, he's on tour. So he's just videoing himself what he works out in his hotel room, which I think is really cool because I'm starting to get into fitness. So I think- Like the DJ workout. Yeah, the, the DJ sick. workout. Like yeah. So my hit of the week is um, Avicii's father speaking at the International Music Summit, talking to people about mental health awareness and shining a light on his son's foundation. And I think that's super important to many people out there who struggle with that. And, you know, I thought that was very, you know, very brave and very courageous of him. So my miss of the week is Tinder is, has this new feature called festival mode, which is very, very interesting. You basically use this festival badge. You pick what festival you're going to, and it allows you to see who's going to that specific festival beforehand. So, you know, you can meet up with those people. It's a miss for me because I feel like the communication I always so have bad. Network issues. Yeah, 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 it's, it's, yeah. it's terrible service. I can never text my friends yeah. even, even if we go all together. My miss of the week is Swedish House Mafia merch. <laughs> I mean, they. This is like a really big reunion for them. Virgil Abloh, like the black and the white. Especially I now, I feel like a lot of artists have such similar merch. Like it's been so long before I've seen a merch. I was like, that really encapsulates what the artist's vision is. But for so many of them, it's like all the same merch. I mean, you're used yeah. to chilling with Getter, who has like <laughs> sick merch yeah. that's like really unique. And he works with local designers, which yeah. is what is really. It's cool. just the same care from the artist is not put into the clothes like yeah. it is with someone that has. A yeah. fashion sense like that. But the funny thing is it's gonna sell out probably because people really like wearing that sort of off-white yeah. right now. A girl by the name of Rave Snooky. For some of you that don't know, she's pretty big in the EDM Twitter world, is that right? She is, yes. Yeah, definitely. so she posted a video of herself at a festival and she's shuffling and people start walking in front of her and she posts something like she's pissed that like people are getting in front of her while she's trying to dance. <laughs> so then Trampa, who's a, a bass artist, just like trashes her and is like, you're not anything special, you know, you're rude for like calling these people out for walking in front of you. And then she goes even a step further. She's getting roasted in the comments and she's just saying like, hey, there's bigger issues, guys. Like people are starving or I don't know, something like that where she just went totally off, tried to be funny. But I just thought it was so interesting that she posted that and she probably thought she was gonna get a lot of support. All right, so for the announcement I'm most excited for, it comes from actually a show in Dallas again, Stereo Live, <laughs> so by a guy named Space Laces, and he played a track out that uh, nobody had really heard except for in Skrillex sets. Now, a lot of people think this is a Skrillex Space Laces collab. It's really sick. You guys should go check it out, but I'm really hoping this one's released soon. It is so nice, it's and that's so just good. like that's just a dream collab right there. <laughs> like those are two of the greats right there. So mine is kind of similar. It's also a Skrillex track, oh. but etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> oh no way! Yeah, okay, that's sick. That's so much Skrillex. But I mean, of course, I just interviewed him, and he's such an awesome guy. And I've been liking etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera stuff so many years ago, like five years since the Moon when he was doing stuff with Bro Safari. Mm -hmm. um, just that with Skrillex is just. So, oh my god. Yeah, that's yeah. sick. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if you guys have heard, but Must Die has a new single coming out called Chaos on Never Say Die this Friday. So, I'm really hyped about that. Must Die always brings the heat with um, his production style. So, true that. Yeah. So, for the next episode, we're going to have a whole group of people who are really into EDM talking about one or two topics. So, for that, we're still brainstorming topics. Yeah. About that. But these we are going to be like big really ideas. big. Yeah, yeah, big ideas about just trends in EDM as a whole, artists who are like pioneering different stuff. So it's just gonna be a fun group thing that we're gonna have. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget, we wanna hear from you guys. What do you guys wanna hear us discuss? Leave a comment below or at the handle at Sidewalk Talk on Twitter. Bye guys. See you guys. <laughs>